Hello, it's Pauline here, and I'm reading you the third book from the Saddle Tank book series, and it's called Winifred Comes Home. And it's dedicated to all those who are far from home. So we've got the title page. And it starts with a map of Winifred's journey back home back across the North Atlantic Ocean. Finally reaching Bala in Wales. Winifred, the little quarry engine, was in a museum in America. She had been brought all the way from Wales to be there and was very happy telling visitors all about her life back home, pulling slate wagons and working in the quarry. But after a while, less people came to see her. Sometimes the days would slip by without anyone at all. Once she asked a boy who was passing, Hey, where are all your friends? He stopped and stared at her. Dunno, he said. Guess they're all back home watching TV. It's a very, very bad, said the Bugatti. We're jiggered, said the Jag. Eventually, the owner of the museum came to visit. Sorry, guys, said Mr Holman. I have to close this old place down. I'm moving you to a warehouse next to my racetrack in Indianapolis. Winifred and the cars were sad to leave, but they knew that a warehouse was better than a scrap metal yard, and soon they were on their way. Winifred, the Bugatti and the Jaguar were all put into store, tucked away with lots of shiny cars that were snoozing in a cool, clean warehouse. Howdy, they muttered sleepily to the new arrivals. The warehouse was so close to the racetrack that Winifred could hear the distant roar of the racing cars as they zoomed around the circuit. She yawned. Oh, there's nothing to do here, she said. No rail tracks, no passengers, no work to do. And soon she fell asleep too. Meanwhile, not so far away, in Terry Holt, the two engines, Ogwin and Glidder, that came with Winifred on the very same ship from Wales were in an old abandoned stable on the Holman estate. With no one to light their fire or tracks to run on, they too had fallen asleep. And so they all stayed for many years, and it would have remained so if something very special hadn't happened. One morning, the doors of the warehouse edged open. There were loud noises and light poured in. Winifred began to wake up. In the doorway stood two strange figures. They began waving their arms excitedly. Hello, Winifred, we're here to take you home, they cried. You haven't been forgotten. And the two men ran over to her. Winifred blinked several times. The taller man leaned forward. You do want to come home, he said. Back to Wales, said the other. There was a long pause, then she smiled. Awesome, mumbled Winifred sleepily. Along came a forklift truck and a telehandler to carry Winifred out of the shed. The telescopic arm of the telehandler reached forward and lifted the front and the forklift truck lifted the back. Whoa, whoa, she's heavy, steady on, shouted Woody, the driver, as the truck tipped forwards. Winifred was as heavy as two elephants. As Winifred was slowly carried out of the shed, she called out to the cars. Goodbye, guys. Then she was carried out, uh, carried over to a large metal box. Winifred was delighted to feel her wheels touch the rails that had been placed in front of the box. Suddenly, Mr Morris cried, No! And he ran forwards with a tape measure and climbed on Winifred's footplate to measure her. Your chimney is too tall. We'll never get you in. It'll have to go. Oh, please don't take away my chimney, cried Winifred. I will put it back when you're in Wales, my dear, said Mr Burley, and he patted her saddle tank reassuringly.
and so the chimney was removed. Then the telehandler extended its long telescopic arm and gently pushed Winifred. Her wheels started to go round. Yee I'm moving, cried Winifred as she rolled along the rails into the container. See you in Wales, said Mr Burley. I'm taking you to live at the Bala Lake Railway. And the two men waved as the doors of the container closed. Winifred was now in the dark, but she could feel the whole box move as a crane driver lifted the container onto a semi-trailer. Home, she said, smiling as she sat in the dark. Now it was time to collect Winifred's friends, Ogwin and Glitter. Winifred had been kept in a clean, dry, modern warehouse, but her friends had spent all those years in a disused stable. Good grief, what is that? said Mr Morris, as two furry creatures scurried down from Ogwin's footplate. It's a bit whiffy, said Mr Burley. There were raccoons everywhere, and they had pooed on the footplate. I'm taking you to the Beamish Museum in County Durham, said Mr Morris to the engines. Then Ogwen and Glitter were lifted onto metal sheets and towed out of the stable. A huge container arrived and was lifted by a crane onto the ground in front of the engines where some rails were placed in front of it. Once again, Mr Morris got out his tape measure. Your chimney has to go too, he said to Glitter. What about our cabs, said the engines. I think they'll do, said Mr M. Ogwin and Glitter had only just managed to squeeze into the container. Goodbye, dear, they said to each other. See you back in Blighty. And they soon set off too on the long journey back home. Several weeks later, a cargo ship arrived at Southampton. Somewhere deep in the midst of all those containers was Winifred. There's a container ship. It's very big. Lots of containers on it. On a sunny day at Bala Lake Railway, a large container arrived on a lorry. It was carefully lowered down onto rails in the yard. Winifred was very excited. She knew she was back on dry land. She could hear people and birds and sheep. I'm home, she cried. I'm home. Mr Burley opened the doors of the metal box and there was Winifred smiling at everyone. Let me pull you out, cried Alice. So Mr B and Rob the engineer linked up the engines and Alice carefully towed Winifred out of the box. Suddenly Winifred saw the diesels. They looked pretty miserable. Sorry we were so mean to you when we took your job, they called out. Winifred knew that the diesels had missed out on a great adventure and had lost their jobs too. She smiled back. Chill out, guys. I've had a great time. Then everyone gathered round and Mr B made a speech. Welcome back, they all cried. Then the people cheered and the engines tooted their whistles. Winifred smiled at everyone. Thank you, she said. I'm so happy to be home. There she is at the Ballalake Railway at Lanuchlin. That's her journey again, all the way from America. Through Southampton, back to Bala. And the last page just shows the back head of Winifred's boiler, just explaining all the different parts. And of course, you can go and visit Winifred and Alice, of course, at the Bala Lake Railway. Hope to see you there soon. Take care. Bye.